This is going to be the next part of the series on taking notes in your Bible. And we're looking at the number 13. The number 13 in the Bible is 85% negative. And what I did was, in my common man's reference Bible, I went to the verse that most reminds me of this topic, and that would be Genesis 13:13. 13, 13. And I've got some notes down here at the bottom of this page. But then in my wide margin Bible, my new wide margin Bible, I uh, put the notes in the back. And you'll see that uh, in this new one, that it has a whole bunch of spaces for notes in the back. And it's even labeled A, B, C, D. And what I did was, I put it in a section that I labeled A1. So I went back to Genesis 13, 13, and next to that verse, I put A1. That way, when I go to that verse, I can just simply go to the back and note that it's in section A1. That way, I have all those notes there. That way, I'll always have them with me. I don't have to go looking for them. I just know that they're always there. But I'm going to show you some things about this number 13. And if you would like, put these notes in your Bible. That way, if somebody asks you about this, if somebody, you know, or this is a good topic that you can bring up to someone to get them interested in the Bible. Because this is one of those things that shows the Bible is a supernatural thing. It's not just written by man. It's written by God. And um, you can take them and show them these things. Or you can get you a little notebook and write all these notes down in a notebook and always have it with your Bible. That way you're always prepared. But look at Genesis 13, 13. It says, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Now notice this is chapter 13, verse 13. And then you have 13 words in the verse. And something else. In this verse you have the words wicked and sinners. Now, there's a thing in the Bible called the law of first mention, meaning the first time that a word is used, that sets the tone for it throughout the entire Bible. And this is the first time the word wicked and the first time the word sinners shows up. And it just happens to be talking about homosexuals, wicked and sinners. In Genesis 13, 13, homosexuals are rebellious because they're rebelling against the word of God with their lifestyle. Another thing, put the word wicked and sinners right next to each other. It's 13 letters. Homosexuality that people call the sodomites today. Homosexuality, that's 13 letters. Put the two places, Sodom and Gomorrah together. That's 13 letters. You know, when uh, Lot took the angels in, in Genesis 19, those men of Sodom came out and said to Lot, bring these men out that we may know them. That's 13 letters. We may know them. Uh, when God had enough and he brought judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, what did he use? Fire and brimstone. Put fire and brimstone together. That's 13 letters. So you'll see that that whole story of Sodom and Gomorrah connected with the number 13. Then in Genesis 14, 4, it says, 12 years they served Chedorlaomer, Omar, and in the 13th year they rebelled. Look at that. Connecting the number 13 with rebellion. And then in the New Testament, in Matthew 27, verse 3 through 5, you see this man named Judas. Now, I'm sure you know who Judas Iscariot is. But it says, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. The whole story of this character Judas is connected with the number 13. 
You see in Mark chapter 3 and in Matthew 10, Judas is always listed last on the list of the 12 disciples, making him number 13, if you count Jesus in the group. The name Judas Iscariot itself has 13 letters. What is Judas known for? He betrayed Jesus. That's 13 letters. What did, it, what did Judas say that he did? He, is, he said he betrayed innocent blood. Innocent blood, that's 13 letters. What did he do when he figured out he was condemned? He went and hanged himself. That's 13 letters. Commit suicide. That's 13 letters. They have a show that was very controversial called 13 Reasons Why. It's about suicide. And it's got the number 13 in the title. Where did Judas go when he died? The Bible says in the book of Acts he went to his own place. That's 13 letters. A lot of people say that that to his own place is the bottomless pit. Bottomless pit is 13 letters. Then, you know the Gospels. They talk about the same stories. And they give a little bit more of a description in each one. Uh, John 13 talks about Judas. How about that? John chapter 13. John chapter 13 and verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So in John 13, you have the story of Judas being full of the devil. Then in John 13, 26, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop. When I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. So Jesus is revealing who it is that's going to betray him. In John chapter 13, verse 26, 26 is 13 times 2. Then in Zechariah 11, 13, you have a prophecy of Judas Iscariot. In verse 13, And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized of the, uh, out of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. So how about that? Judas Iscariot connected with the number 13. Judas Iscariot is a, at the least a type of the Antichrist. Some people say that he will be the Antichrist. The Antichrist, put that together, that's 13 letters, the Antichrist. And if you go to Mark chapter 7, verses 20 through 23, Jesus lists 13 evils that defile a person. In Mark 7, 20 through 23, it says, And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. That's 13 evils that defile a person. How about that? Jesus listed 13 evils. And notice he said an evil eye. What about that? An evil eye. Look at the back of the dollar bill. You'll see that. Evil eye. Look at Zechariah eleven seventeen, where it shows you that the Idle shepherd, which is the Antichrist, is going to have a bad right eye. Look everywhere you look, you'll see that all seeing eye symbolism, which is also connected with the Antichrist and the number 13. And then in the Old Testament, in Ezra chapter 2 and verse 13, you have this man named Adonikim. It says, The children of Adonikim, 660 and 6. That is 666 children, 666, in connection with the number 13. 666 is the mark of the beast. When you have 13 and 6 together in the Bible, then it's really negative. And that's where you get Friday the 13th. Because Friday, that's the sixth day of the week. If you start on Saturday, Saturday or if you start on Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
That's the sixth day of the week. If you start on Sunday and uh, Friday the 13th, connecting the sixth day of the week with the 13th. That's where people came up with Friday the 13th. Six and 13 connected. And you have six and 13 connected in Ezra 2.13. And once again in Revelation 13, that's one of the greatest chapters on the Antichrist. Revelation 13, starting in verse 13, it says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. So, just like in Ezra 2.13, 13 was connected with 666. Here in Revelation 13, it's also connected with 666 and the Antichrist. And also Revelation 13.18. 18, that's 3 times 6. 666. Six, six. Put three sixes. 6 plus 6 plus 6, that's 18. So you see these, these numbers even. Are, this shows that the people, when they translated the King James Bible and they put in the chapter and verse markings, they were led by God on that as well. It can't just be a coincidence. Because look at Second Chronicles 9.13. It says, Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. Six hundred Three score and six, that's six, six, six. Connected with the number 13. Also connected with rebellion because Solomon was told not to multiply wives or to multiply gold. Uh, none, none of them were supposed to do that. In Deuteronomy 17, 17, it says, Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. So he was in rebellion in Second Chronicles 9.13. And it's also connected with 6.6.6. And also in Deuteronomy 17.17, 17, it says not to multiply wives. But that's what Solomon did, and they led his heart away from the Lord. Multiply wives. That's 13 letters. Rebellion. Solomon rebelled. His wives led his heart away from the Lord. Then in Revelation 17, you have the great whore. Revelation 17, 1, it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The great whore, that's 13 letters. Then in verse 5 in Revelation 17, What's on her forehead? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She has 13 words on her forehead. And you know this as the woman who rides the beast. Rides the beast, that's 13 letters. The beast is the Antichrist. The Antichrist, that's 13 letters. This woman wears purple and scarlet. Put those two colors together, that's 13 letters. Most people believe this to be the mystery of Babylon to be the Roman Catholic Church. Put Roman Catholic down, count it, that's 13 letters in Roman Catholic. So that mystery of Babylon is connected with the number 13. The rebels. In Revelation 20, you have uh, where the biggest rebel of all time is bound for a thousand years, that's the devil. 
It says in Revelation 20 and verse 1, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, bottomless pit, that's 13 letters, and a great chain in his hand. That's that word chain 13 times in the Bible. This is the 13th use of the word chain. And he laid hold on the dragon. Dragon is 13 times in the New Testament, and this is the 13th use of it. That old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. So there you have that story connected with the number 13. You have the number 13 that's still considered to, to be an un, unlucky number today. But then you have some people who see it as a lucky number. For example, the singer Taylor Swift loves the number 13. And uh, I, I read an article about her being obsessed with the number 13 and how she uses it in her music. And I looked at her last CD, I believe it was, and on track number 13... She has a song called False God. And just look at some of the blasphemous lyrics of this song. It says, but we might just get away with it. That's, that's not good. Somebody talking about getting away with something. A lot of people think they're going to get away with what they're doing. She says, but we might just get away with it. She says, religions in your lips even if it's a false god, we'd still worship. We might just get away with it. The altar is my hips. Even if it's a false god, we'd still worship this love. So notice the blasphemous lyrics. Track number 13, false god. How about that? And then she said this here in an article I read about her. She said, I was born on the 13th. I turned 13 on Friday the 13th. My first album went gold in 13 weeks. My first number one song had a 13 second intro. She said, every time I've won an award, I've been seated in either the 13th seat, the 13th row, the 13th, 13th section, or row M, which is the 13th letter. And she sometimes draws the number 13 on her hand. So, I think there's something to that. Track number 13, False God on her CD. And I'm sure there's more, there's more about to that that I don't even know about because I don't, I don't listen to Taylor Swift. I never listen to Taylor Swift as a lost person, but uh, I'm sure there's more than that even. I just don't believe anything is a co really a coincidence. Okay, and then 1 Timothy 6.10, a very famous verse, which says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So it says the love of money is the root of all evil. Write down root of all evil, and count it. That's 13 letters. And I want to show you this on the back of the dollar bill. This can't be a coincidence. Somebody put this together that likes that number 13. So look at it. There are 13 steps on the pyramid. Look over at the eagle. There are 13 stars above the eagle. There are 13 vertical and 13 horizontal stripes on the shield, 13 leaves, and 13 berries on the branch in the eagle's hand, and the eagle is holding 13 arrows. And then look at some of the words on there. That annuit coeptus, that's 13 letters. And then it says new world order. That's 13 letters. New world order is 13 letters. That's what that stands for under the pyramid there, New World Order. So you see that, that back of the dollar bill connected with the number 13. And then it has that evil eye, that all-seeing eye in the pyramid that comes up in music. 
it comes up in the movies. You go to just go to Target and look at the the front cover of the books. When you go through that uh, the book section there, or any bookstore, you're gonna see a theme of that all C and I symbolism. Walking through the mall, look at some of the posters of you, you know anything in there. There's gonna be some all C and I symbolism. Somebody covering the eye, something like that. That's very a big thing in the occult. Look at Anton LaVey's pictures of Anton LaVey, the pastor of the Church of Satan. He does the eye in the pyramid thing. Aleister Crowley. You'll see pictures of him with the eye in the pyramid. Aleister Crowley, the most famous Satanist that there is, known for being a Satanist. Now, I'm going to show you some words. Some of them I've already mentioned. Some of them I haven't that have 13 letters. But these are rebellious people or places or things that have 13 letters. Think about the most rebellious singer, satanic singer, in the past 20 years. Who would it be? Marilyn Manson. 13 letters. Church of Satan. That's 13 letters. The Antichrist. 13 letters. Judas Iscariot, 13 letters. New World Order, 13 letters. Don't Tread on Me, 13 letters. Janus Jambres, the two magicians that went against Moses, that's 13 letters. Jacob's Trouble, 13 letters. Sodom Gomorrah, 13 letters. Wicked Sinners, 13 letters. Fire Brimstone, 13 letters. The Great Whore, Roman Catholic, reprobate mind, bottomless pit, homosexuality, false prophets, in the last days, sin of the world, cast out devils, thick darkness, Sodom and Egypt. In the tribulation, Jerusalem it was so wicked, God calls it Sodom and Egypt. Fiery serpents, when God's angry, he comes at you as a consuming fire. 13 letters. The lowest hell. 13 letters. Transgression. Bad reputation. The Illuminati. 13 letters. And it can go on and on and on. You see the number 13 connected with sin, rebellion, judgment. All things negative. In Genesis 17.25, it says, And Ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. 13-year-olds are known for being rebellious. And Ishmael is said to be a wild man in Genesis 16.12. Ishmael's a bad guy. The people that came from him are rebellious. Right there, the 13 connected with the number is the number of rebellion. Genesis 10, 9, it says, He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, Even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Nimrod is the 13th from Adam. And his name itself means rebel. Nimrod, the 13th from Adam, his name means rebel. Right there, it's connected with the number 13. And then in Genesis 3, 13, it says, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is that that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Here in Genesis 13, 13, it shows where Eve rebelled. It shows where Satan, the serpent, led her to rebel. Serpent is in the Bible 13 times. 1 Samuel 13, 13. You have the story of Saul who rebels. It says, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And then you can look at other 1313s in the Bible. 
Look up on your own time. Look up Proverbs 13, 13, Isaiah 13, 13, Ezekiel 13, 13, Matthew 13, 13, Mark 13, 13, Romans 13, 13. And you're going to find that it's connected with rebellion all throughout the Bible and that it's mostly always negative. So look up these things. Uh, I hope this gives you an interest in the Bible. That's why I like to do, you know, very interesting studies like this. Show you the Bible is not your average book. There's something to these things. So I hope you'll take notes on this in your Bible or in your little notebook. And just stay in the Word constantly. You may not agree with everything I've said. But you have to admit there's something to this. There's something to the number 13. And, you know, if if all this is, is just a coincidence, even though I don't particularly believe in coincidences, even if it all is just a coincidence, it still got you in the Bible. It still made you want to read the Bible, get into the Bible a little bit. And that's my main reason of doing these is to get people interested in the Bible. I want people to live in the Word.